This presentation is on the Counter Canon Challenge presented by Stephanie, third year sociology student, PhD, Danny, second year PhD student, art department, Sujin, second year PhD student, visual cultures, Shamika, third year PhD student, computer science, Favin, third year PhD sociology, Hassan, second year PhD stats, and Eduardo, second year PhD sociology. The Counter Canon Challenge was developed in response to and as a result of various decolonial movements such as hashtags roads must fall and hashtag my curriculum so white. The, ma the marginality of racialized BIPOC voices in an academic context is central to the problem articulated by these student led groups. Academic debates challenge the scope, content, perspective, and origins of the, material, of the materials in curricula. The primary problem is the continued reliance on a canon of predominantly European or white settler scholarship by both faculty and students. This problem could be attributed to academic freedom, a lack of time, and underexposure to racialized scholars resulting in the exclusion of racialized scholars from reading lists. Due to factors such as racialization, whereby scholars have been indoctrinated into Western institutions, students may feel they, mu they must adopt the style, politics, and canon of their supervisors. As a result, racialized students, like us, have carved out spaces for ourselves where we do not need to perform and center Western values. At Goldsmiths, the GRPN is one such space. The politics that are explored and shared are explored in a space that are being cultivated and disseminated with the wider institution via this mythological intervention to address the underrepresentation of racialized scholars in reading lists. Rather than attempt to engage in curriculum review from the top down, that is working with lecturers and administrative staff, we, provo we propose intervening from the bottom up, a student-led focus intervention. This presentation will focus on the methods refined and data collected during the pilot, where there were MA students enrolled in the theories, concepts, and methods module convened by Drs. Les Back and Evelyn Rupert during the 2020-2021 academic year. The challenge was to cite at least 20% racialized scholars in their TCM summatives and offer mentorship to, from members of the Goldsmiths Racialized Postgraduate Network. Here is the methods overview. There are three phases of, of this intervention. The pre-intervention, working with coordinators, lecturers, and mentors. The intervention, working with coordinators, mentors, and mentees. And the post-intervention, working with coordinators, lecturers to code, for coding and creating outputs. In the pre-intervention, coordinators interview the lecturers, Coordinators confirm the participation of GRPN members. Coordinators draft and send out the call for participation in the challenge to students who become mentees. We ask for a 250 word abstract. In the intervention, mentors select their mentees based on information gathered from their abstracts. Coordinators send introductions to mentors and mentees and include a link to the alternative canon reading list. Mentors and mentees meet at least twice. Mentors are encouraged to do research on potential readings to share with mentees. Mentees send references from their summatives to the coordinators, as well as PDFs of all works cited. Mentors and mentees send in 200 to 300 word reflections on the process. The post-intervention. Coordinators code references by visibly, institutionally, and geographically racialized. Coordinators also follow through with the politically racialized method using Python. Coordinators also meet with lecturers for a post-intervention interview. Coordinators produce outputs, which include the reading lists one and two in a report on the process. Reading list one or output one includes the list of resources that were found by mentors and shared with mentees. Output two 
the list of resources that made it through the coding process from the mentees. This includes the references that were actually cited by the mentees. This list differs from the first list in two crucial ways. One, not all resources were used by the mentees. And two, the mentees cited references not shared by the mentors. The phenomena of grace is socially produced as opposed to ontologically given or static. Franz Fanon's sociogeny and Sylvia Winter's sociogenic principle gave a name to lived experience and a knowledge of what it is like to be Black that was missing in European and settler discourse of the human. In criminology, discussions about race and racism have been muffled. Lilia Schwartz in O Espectaculo das Razas shows that the concept of race and racism in Latin America, in particular Brazil, start from the understanding of the model which society was founded. First, liberalism as an idea of progress, and second, racism as an explanation of social inequalities. We argue that this gap is represented in citation practices in Western academia. We have created a typology of racialization, visibly, geographically, institutionally, and politically racialized. Our categories of racialization name the different ways that we, members of the GRPN, racialize a scholar's academic work. This is a living method. We rely on the lived experience of mentors and mentees, as well as the process of the coding visible racialization and practice of the sociogenic principle to create categories of racialization that encompass different intersections of what it means for a text to be virtualized. The process identifies the particular categories of racialization that placed the text outside of the traditional canon in the social evolution of academia. There are complexities and limitations in this method. Visibly racialized. For the purposes of this project, visual racialization refers to the political practice of calling in capital O others. The academic literature focuses the discourse on diversity, inclusion, and representation. Diversity is problematic in, in this context because it, include, it is inclusive of whiteness. Inclusion centers whiteness capital O others are added and stirred into a pot of whiteness. Representation is more to the point, but it is voyeuristic in its presumption of the audience. The subject is still the white gaze. Instead, the aim of visual racialization is precisely the thing that all visibly racialized people know. We look to find capital O others. We reject a colorblind politics. Instead, we seek to embrace a framework of visual solidarity. The aim is to call in capital O others. This is a framework long embraced in critical disability studies. Those of us who are seen as racialized and or physic physically disabled experience the world wholly differently from those who are not visibly identifiable as capital O other. We reject physiognomy, the pseudoscience defined as the study of a person's facial features or expressions, especially when regarded as indicative of a character or ethnic origin. This term is white supremacist than its origins. Its aim is to call out difference, to create power hierarchies that privilege whiteness. We are in, in calling in capital O others, adding politics, ideas, and locations that have been missing from Western discourse. We are intentionally making space. Visual racialization, as we hold it, is a sort of visual solidarity. It is inclusive. The aim is to make, to make space for more people and more differences. In criminology, there's a long history of visual criminalizing. 
racial theories were initially based on Lombroso's perspective on how to identify a criminal. For him, criminality was inherent and could be identified by phenotype. Vilma raced on public security policies that were implemented in the city of Salvador, Brazil. Race affirms that the police and the state are supported by these eugenic theories of the late 19th century, creating in the imaginary medical legal the image of a subject historically defined by the biotype of a black man as an example of a criminal. Race 20, uh, 2001. In the context of the counter canon challenge, there are limitations to the use of visual racialization as a signifier of race as a method. Visibility alone cannot be the only basis for updating reading lists with racialized scholars. There are assumptions that are made about the geographic origins of, a, of visible racialization. There's a lot to consider with global migration and diasporas throughout the world. The spatial location of bodies that are racializable. Criminology discourse racializes bodies in motion and criminally labels racialized bodies in motion as space invaders. The category of geographic racialization identifies and includes texts written outside of the global west and global north in the academic canon. The aim is to decenter Occidentalism. The counter-canon challenge approaches geographic racialization from a reckoning of loss rather than discovery. Colonial hierarchies created a dominant framework that positions the global West and global North to be the producers of knowledge. The citation project of decolonization breaks from this dynamic by actively searching for traces that acknowledge the preceded colonial violence of erasure. For example, how might Stuart Hall's writing about the racialization of mugging and muggers in UK in policing the crisis rub against and alongside Vilma Reese's Atuqueados Pella Estado, where the concept of Atuqueados refers to an in inundation of policing and interminable surveillance in Salvador, Brazil. The geographically decolonized canon moves researchers toward the opportunity to other the self and a and a radicalization of their comparativist gaze. The perceived limitations of the category are in fact prompts for active research. Many texts will include insights that will appear as unfamiliar, perhaps illegible traces of moments of pre-emergence. Seeking out geographically racialized sources of knowledge is to make space for the ideologies that will not necessarily be recognized by members of the GRPN, but will become clearer through the collaborative discussions between mentors and mentees, as well as the culminative nature of our outputs over the life of our uh, over the life course of the counter canon challenge. The limitation on legibility also extends liter literally to an imbalance in the avail availability of translated works. The geographically racialized category serves as an open invitation to actively seek out the expertise of scholars working in non-English speaking geographic contexts to create an ongoing web of key readings that can in turn become projects for decolonized translation, research, and collaboration. A prime example of multidisciplinary research from, sparked from a spark from centering geographically racialized thinkers is Paula Ferry's concept of critical pedagogy, which Bell Hooks takes up in her book, Teaching to Transgress, where she is, has a conversation with Ferry. The category of institutionalized of institutional racism also includes academic literature and institutional resources that ideologically align and operate within decolonial and feminist frameworks, while groups that are institutionally racialized seek and disseminate knowledge from non-Western, non-white sources, unless the scholarship also meets another criterion of racialization. Institutional racialization also characterizes student-led 
and staff-led extracurricular groups, programming and actionable initiatives located both within and external from the university and other corresponding institutions that serve to support the specific needs of racialized scholars academically and emotionally. These spaces are created by racialized scholars for themselves and each other for the purpose of constructively critiquing and presenting current research, propagating resources that are excluded from larger or mainstream canons, assessing the needs of racialized groups on campus, and finding solutions for how they can better be for how they can better be supported. These spaces also provide access to field experts and external scholars through reading groups, guest lecture series, programming, and site visits. Affiliation with these groups can also be used to codify scholars, academic literature, and research outputs as racialized. Politically racialized. Political racialization can be defined simply as texts that advocate, advance, and hold the principles for decolonizing. In order to identify the political orientation of the texts within the, the limited scope of this project, this is a process for determining the orientation centered around the terms and phrases in the decolonizing discourse. We quantify the contents and contexts of the decolonizing discourse spatiotemporally. We also acknowledge the limits of quantifiability. For example, the impossibility of reading all texts the expansiveness of the words that denote decolonizing and racialized scholars may not frequently or explicitly use terms that are legible as decolonial principles due to their theoretical practice that tend to be more based on embodiment, lived experience, and artistic representation. In fact, it was the limitations that enabled us to resort to this method. Political Political racialization identifies non-physical markers for allyship. This is a way of bringing in and encourage allies who are not vis visually racialized into the project of decolonizing. For example, Dr. Les Back and Professor Catherine Yusuf. These scholars are not visibly racialized, but are located in the and are located in the global north and do not at first glance of their academic profiles explicitly affiliate with institutions that are advocating for the decolonial project they work at intersections though their texts and projects consistently embody anti-colonial and anti-racist principles they are not immediately legible as scholars working to decolonize academia. By focusing on the content of their writing, the category of political racialization encourages legibility and solidarity for the principles that advance the project of decolonization. In developing this process for defining and processing political racialization, we are operating within a feminist framework, third world subaltern, indigenous and black, feminist principles. Seeking an alternative is feminist, Ahmed 2017. Our embrace of difference positions us in fourth wave feminism, which includes the use of technology, intersectionality, and transnationalism. This category is an invitation for scholars to contribute to our living word bank. Here's the, word, here's the working word bank generated through mentor-mentee discussions and extracted from texts within the bibliographies. These terms are used to code texts for racialization. This is a living method. Here's a list of terms specific to categories of racialization within criminology. This is also a living method and will grow by text. Um, taken from within the bibliographies and mentor-mentee discussions. We used a Python script with a library that reads PDFs to read through a directory of the PDFs using the GLOB library. And um, we take each PDF in. We looked at all the texts in each PDF and compare the words in the text to the subset of words and phrases. An output was created that stated the name of the PDF, 
in a Python dictionary with each word as a key and the number of times the word that was found in the PDF as the value. Coding. We'll analyze your summative bibliographies as data. We will sort the references by a, racialized, by a racialization typology. We will label each reference as visibly, geographically, institutionally, and politically racialized. The methodological intervention came about from a need to, from a need to recognize and uplift racialized scholarship, especially political racialization in academia. The method we developed sought to identify those who are seeking who are speaking on the topic of racialization and decolonizing by focusing on the key terms from the discourse. The data is the collection of references submitted in the bibliography by the mentee participants. We have received three or four reference lists. We sorted through the reference list for academic texts, books, and articles. We excluded newspaper articles, blogs, social media, and other gray literature, not traditionally included in the canon. The final list of references has a number of sources. The data includes references sourced from the modules reading lists, the reading suggested by mentors, the readings found by mentees themselves. It is important that we code the entire reading list as decolonizing discourse aims to de-emphasize de epistemological hierarchies. This validates the methodological intervention as a potentially useful process for influencing the reading list from the students up through the readers. That is to say, the students have access to knowledge and expertise and experiences. These experiences can and should inform knowledge production. Where we left with the list of references that are traditionally academic texts published in recognized journals and or reputable publishers, we created an Excel document with each citation in its own cell with the column for its citations. From there, we created another column with the names of the authors. Next, we began the coding process. We favored in or truth that is true false logic. If the text meets one of the categories, political, geographic, visual, or institutional racialization, then that citation is considered racialized. We are faced with an unresolved question of what should or should not be included as a text could make our list because the author is visibly racialized, but the content includes zero words of political racialization and is potentially against our aims of decolonizing, that is anti-decolonial. A critical question is, must authors be both visibly and slash culturally racialized and politically racialized to be included? It is, an important, it is important to note that this is a point of continued discussion within the GRPN. We intend to hold a focus group with the GRPN to make a decision for the next iteration of this project. Visual racialization data. The method for coding visible racialization begins with the coder. The coding is done by visibly racialized people, members of the GRPN. The process for identifying the scholar as visibly racialized is searching the scholar on the internet. We've relied on Google as a database. A visibly racialized person decides if they identify the scholar as visibly racialized. When there are multiple authors, if any author credited as visibly racialized, if any author is credited as visibly racialized, the paper is coded as visibly racialized. If a scholar is identified as visibly racialized, the citation gets a one mark in the file. If not, they get zero. If the coder cannot tell, they change the color to green to flag the uncertainty. The process is usually repeated at least once by another coder. Geographic racialization data. The method for coding geographic racialization is that we are looking where the scholar is located, where they are writing from. The geographic location of the author is a type of racialization. 
This is crucial from decolonizing hierarchies and demystifying the myth that knowledge is produced, originated, and is concentrated in the West. We Googled where the scholars' institution affiliations, the universities, or think tanks are located, regardless of the institution's political orientation. We also looked at the locations of the publishers and the journals. If a scholar is identified as geographically racialized, the citation gets a one mark in the file. If not, they get zero. If a coder cannot tell, we change the color green to flag the uncertainty. The process is usually repeated at least once by another coder. The method for coding institutional racialization is looking at the affiliations of the scholars that orient their political and academic frameworks. For example, we, the members of GRPN, have carved out a space for ourselves at Goldsmiths to identify our personal political and social identities within a larger institution that does not necessarily reflect the GRPN. We look at the list of affiliations that scholars identify in their publications, CVs, and other web pages that come up when we Google them. We are looking for a specific, for a specific type of affiliation, not the university or the think tank. We are looking for scholars, for scholar associations like the GRPN, et cetera, subcommittees like the Anti-Racism Working Group, Liberate Our Degrees, GARA, galleries, galleries like the White Pube, non-academic publications, British Cr Criminology Association, and others. If the scholar identifies with or affiliates with an association that politically orients the reader, the text is identified as institutionally racialized. This includes the publication itself, uh, such as the journal, magazine, institution, etc. If a scholar is identified as institutionally ra racialized, the citation gets a one mark in the file. If not, they get zero. If the coder cannot tell, they change the color green to flag the uncertainty. This process is usually repeated at least once by another coder. Political racialization. The method for coding political racialization quantifies the decolonial principles within what is written and published. We created a word bank. We use Python to count how many times a word or phrase from the word bank shows up in the text. If the text produces two or more occurrences of the terms in the word bank, the text is identified as politically racialized. If the text is identified as politically racialized, the citation gets a one mark in the file. If not, they get zero. If the text is by a scholar known to have politically oppositional views to the decolonizing initiative, the coder reviews the occurrences of the terms to determine if it is anti decolonial. If the text is deemed anti decolonial, the text is marked zero and not deemed politically racialized. There are also limits to quantifiability. The terms can be used negatively through Stiley, Ben Carson, Never Trigus, etc. And conceptual stretching is a reality. Racialized people may use decolonizing terms fewer times because their principles are embodied or embedded within their language and areas of research. The word bank is ever expanding and therefore incomplete. Our filtering process relies on trust-based relationships between mentor and mentee. The data. It is crucial for us to consider the sources of the references in this project. The references are referred. In this case, the sources are referred between mentors and mentees. They will have read the text that will be coded. Additionally, GRPN hosts regular alternative canon lectures as part, of a, as part of a series. These are open to the general public. We are introduced to scholars, their politics, and their work through these lectures. The next speaker will be Dr. Duncan Yoon on April 24th. That is to say the texts have been vetted. The data is spreadsheets of references, the Python put interview notes, reviews of the intervention. We use the reviews 
and the interview notes to further refine the method. We're getting feedback at every level, mentees, mentors, researchers, lecturers, during the intervention. The processes for coding both the Python output and the spreadsheets were outlined in previous slides. Once coded, we're left with coded data. For the pilot, we informed the mentees if they reached the 20% threshold. We noted if they include if we included gray literature, the percentages were higher than without. Take visible racialization, for example. Across all participants, the overall percentage of visibly racialized references was over 40%, whereas where without the gray literature, it hovered just around 20%. It should be noted that we chose 20% arbitrarily. It seemed feasible for just about any subject matter. Lastly, what do we do with the references after the intervention? For the pilot, they live in three places. We submitted a version of the combined output one as a blog to the sociology department webpage. We added the reference list to the alternative canon list, and we published in our and circulate pieces of the reference on the GRPN website on the counter canon page. The Goldsmiths Library has also published this list on their website. The pilot was successful. The student participants enjoyed the experience. All of the students reached the goal. The lecturers have updated their reading list to include all of the resources that passed through the counter canon coding process. That is the output one. The library has purchased all of the publications that were missing from the library. Limitations. Coding is time consuming. The reliance on Google as a primary search database um, due to, with spatiotemporal location dictating the results is a limitation. The word bank cannot be exhausted as new terms and phrases are being developed, defined, and redefined each day. We are inviting students enrolled in the globalization, crime, and justice module this term to participate in the counter planning challenge. Participation requires that you meet with an assigned mentor at least twice, and that you send us a reference list for your summative assessment and all of the articles we cited as PDFs. Once you have done that, we will issue you a scorecard with the percentage of your reference list that includes racialized scholars. If you choose to participate, you're committing to cite at least 20% racialized scholars in your summits. Here it is, here is how it will all work. As mentioned, there are three phases of intervention. The first phase, pre-intervention, is first the consultants, Sujin, Stephanie, and Danny, will have interviewed lecturer Jennifer, Dr. Jennifer Fleetwood in the Globalization, Criminology, and Justice module. The coordinator, Eduardo, has done outreach, has done outreach and confirmed interests of the JRPM members as, mentees, as mentors. We have drafted the call for participants in the challenge to you all, the students, and it can be found on the VLE. Students who are interested in participating in the challenge will be asked to submit a 250-word abstract this abstract should include the general themes and issues you'd like to explore in your summative assessments for the globalization crime and justice module. The summative assessment is a fact sheet slash blog with a 3000 word reflection. We invite you to write an abstract with the general, with the general themes and issues you'd like to write about in your summative. The abstract is due no later than March 14th. To register your interest, please email, please send an please send an email with your name, commitment to the challenge, and abstract to Eduardo at resetthejournal at gmail.com. Phase two, intervention. Once you've submitted your abstracts, the GRPN mentors will read through the submitted abstracts and select their mentees based on information, themes, issues, slash field that they gather from your abstracts. The coordinator, Eduardo, will send an introduction to mentors and mentees. Next, mentees will send the, reference, the references from summative assessments to coordinators, as well as PDF of all the work cited to Eduardo. 
mentees and mentors will send in a 300 to 200 word reflection about the process. Phase three, post-intervention. The JRPN coding team will code reference lists. The JRPN coding team will also follow up through the political racialized methods using Python. The consultants will meet the lecturers for a post-intervention interview. The coordinator, Eduardo, will send out the results of the coding to each student, that is, if the students meet the 20% threshold. The consultants will produce outputs, and we will share the outputs with the participants. The first output is the list of reference of resources that were found by mentors and shared with the mentees. The second output is the list of resources that have made it through the coding process. This includes the references that were actually cited by the mentees. This list differs from the list from the first in two crucial ways. One, not all resources were used by the mentees, and two, the mentees cited references not shared by mentors.